Folks, welcome to another piking adventure. This is the first trip of 2019 and it has been a while since I've been out. 2018 was a little bit of a washout as far as pike fishing was concerned. Both Mike and I had a lot of uh, family commitments and work commitments and in 2018 we only got out a handful of times. Uh, so let's recap. In December of 2017 that was the last Piking Adventures episode where Mike and I went out on a boat fishing trip and we gave you lots of tips uh, about boat fishing and how to find the fish and it was a, a nice, a particularly nice episode, quite spectacular, very visually spectacular and uh, it was 25 minutes long so it's a, a nice special episode, I'll put a link in the description. But since then, <coughs> we went out in January of 2018 we did a river fishing session in the ban. Unfortunately, it was flooded. Um, we didn't catch anything. Terrible conditions. The water was all muddy. Uh, it was very windy, very unpleasant. And just with the flow, you couldn't do anything. But we decided on the venue and we stuck there. Uh, then in February, we went to a trout fishery, which shall remain nameless. And although Mike and I caught absolutely nothing and we fished hard all day, uh, it was just one of those days where it wasn't really working. We didn't get any bites. And then at the end, we saw a massive, massive pike being caught, which was very exciting. It wasn't caught by either of us. Uh, it was about 24 pounds, it was huge. Uh, it was weighed on my scales as well, uh, which was fantastic and it was really exciting. But if you're familiar with this show, Mike and I are trying to catch a 20 pound pike and to watch someone else actually accomplish our goal right in front of us. Uh, it was exciting to begin with and then whenever I got home, I have to admit, I did feel pretty jealous and, and, and not very good for quite a while. <laughs> so uh, that was February. Then in March, we had uh, a really cold spell and I went out on my own down to our favorite spot at Loch Mokno. Uh, actually, I tried a, it wasn't our favorite spot. I tried a, a new spot on the other side of the gas lock and uh, conditions were absolutely terrible. The air temperature was minus three. The water temperature must have been pretty close to zero. Uh, I caught nothing all day and I tried fishing for roach, perch, bream, pike, anything I could get and caught absolutely nothing. Uh, so let's see. I came home from that having caught nothing but uh, a nasty flu virus which then put me out until about May time when Mike and I tackled the River Blackwater and we didn't catch any pike uh, but we did have some great fun catching some roach. So that's about four or five trips where I have completely blanked, four trips certainly where I've blanked and um, welcome to March 2019. Uh, we're back in the game, back making videos. It's just me today. 
but uh, I've got special permission to fish a private lake. I'm very happy about that, and I'm hoping to uh, to catch at least something that I can show you guys. And if I don't catch uh, a pike or if I get bored, I've got some coarse fishing equipment, so maybe I'll get some roach or some rudd or something like that. But yes, it's a new start. Uh, I'll be making a few new episodes, doing a few new tips and explainers. Very much looking forward to it. Uh, so let's get set up. You notice I'm using a rig bin here. This is the only way to store wire traces. It means they don't get tangled, they're easy to find, and you always have your favorites. If there's one theme in pike fishing, the more you are prepared, the better your chances. So this is a running ledger rig. You can see I've got a very small weight on there just to give it some punch. When the pike takes the bait, the weight can stay put. So for bait, what I've brought with me today is just a standard pike pack. I have a float rod out with a smelt on it. Lots of people swear by smelt. I've never actually caught a pike on smelt. But everybody seems to think it's a wonder bait. So maybe today will be the day that makes a difference. But for my float, uh, sorry, for my ledger dead bait, I'm going to use a personal favorite of mine, which is a roach. And I'm going to inject it with some, uh, some stinky stuff just to make sure it has all the qualities of an attractive bait and to make sure that I've done absolutely everything. To, uh, to have confidence in the bait that I've got out there. Okay, so that's my first cast. I'm not entirely happy with the presentation. I'm not entirely happy with the space between the hooks on a very small smelt bait, but it does seem to be just on the bottom because the float is half cocked. So I'll keep that there. I'll prepare the second rod, and then if anything happens, I can hit it. And if nothing happens, once the second rod's in, I'll change the bait and improve the presentation slightly because confidence is everything. If you're happy with what's in the water, then you're happy to sit in the boat. So let's talk through the setup and hopefully the wind noise won't uh, make too much of a fuss in the microphone. What I have here is a 12 foot Shakespeare specimen agility rod it's reasonably new and I'm very happy with it it's a two pound test curve which really is quite soft for a pike rod but the other rod that I have is like a three pound test curve and it's pretty stiff so I did want a rod that you know even if I'm playing a jack I get like a good uh, a good fight and a lot of spring off it so I'm pretty happy with this rod I've landed a few fish on it and it's it's quite good I have a Shimano bait runner reel. Now this is maybe a little bit heavy duty for what I have at the moment But you never know a good reel is essential whenever you're pike fishing and if you catch a really big fish A good reel is going to make the difference between landing that fish and losing that fish So this one wasn't terribly expensive. It was less than a hundred pounds and again It was bought fairly recently and um, my wife actually got it for me for Christmas. Thanks very much Rafa it has a bait runner function. So what's a bait runner function? It basically means that there's a little lever at the back and you can adjust the sensitivity But if a fish runs it'll just take line freely and it will make that little clicking noise So you can adjust the sensitivity for more or for less uh, Depending on if you're fishing a river and there's a certain amount of flow or something like that Or you just want to adjust the sensitivity of it. I quite like that feature now You should really have that turned off with what I'm doing at the moment because what I have is a bobbin here which is attached to the bank stick which is holding the rod up at the back and a bite alarm up here now I used to consider these things cheating but not anymore because if you're making videos and running around doing other things you really want to know pretty quickly if you've got some sort of bite uh, so that you don't deep hook the fish by leaving it for too long so essentially if the fish runs this is going to climb up or drop down or fall off and you're going to get an audio alarm up here uh, obviously you can change the volume and you can change the tone so if a fish runs I'll certainly know about it here and what I have out there is a roach that I have injected full of some smelly stuff uh, just for that extra extra attracting power and then let me show you the other rod this is a, again, it's a 12 foot rod, but it's got a three pound test curve. It's a little bit more powerful and normally I would use this one for ledgering um, But this time I'm using it for float fishing 
Uh, I like to have one rod with a float and one rod ledgering because with the float rod, especially if it's a new venue, you can use the float and the weight and the setup to try and gauge the depth and see if there's any features. Uh, this also has a bait runner feature on it. It's not a, a Shimano branded one, it's a Daiwa, but it's, uh, it's a pretty nice reel anyway and I'm certainly confident in it. Clearly a good decision. We're into something here. Don't know how big it is. There's a lot of weed here and it's been a problem. I might have to put the phone down and concentrate, but I'm gonna see if I can get a good fight here. So we've got the drag set. Yeah, he's gone into a hidey hole. I'm gonna keep the pressure on, see what I can do. Apply some side strain maybe. See if we can head time towards it. Nice to get some action. I was starting to get that malaise that comes whenever you haven't had anything. Just going for a run. It's been a while since I caught a pike, and I would say that's about eight pounds but it might be between six and eight. So I'm just gonna weigh it. It's always good to sort of calibrate yourself after a while, if you haven't caught a pike in a bit. Uh, you don't wanna be telling your friends you caught a, an eight pounder when you caught a six pounder, if you're an honest fella. And if you don't, want, you don't wanna tell your friends you caught a six pounder when it was an eight pounder. So I'm gonna get out the weigh sling and we'll have a little look at how big this girl is. She's beautiful. Make sure your scales are zeroed. So that's at zero. I'm happy with that. There's maybe a couple of ounces in it. This is maybe a little bit overkill for a fish this size, but as I say, I'm just curious. Yeah, it's only like five and a half pounds. It's only five and a half pounds. <laughs> what did I say between six and eight? Let's get it back in the water. And away it goes. Good stuff. That makes a piking adventure worthwhile. Right, so it's 20 to one. Uh, I've got a couple of hours left. I think I'll probably pack up at about three o'clock. I've had no action since that fish. I have rebaited and recast uh, since the first time I got back in the water. Uh, there was a guy came down with his dog, so I had a chat with him for a little bit. Uh, I'm gonna get something to eat usually whenever you sit down and occupy yourself with something else, like food. Uh, <laughs> you get interrupted. So fingers crossed we get interrupted by a nice juicy pike at about 20 pounds. Um, and sure, if we, get, uh, if we get nothing else, then we'll maybe run through some gear or something like that.
got number two, folks. Excellent. Okay, let's get the net. That is a nice bike. Beautiful, gorgeous fins. It's not the biggest bike in the world, but I'm very happy with it. Absolutely beautiful. Lovely fish. Let's give it a rest and then we'll put it back. just means that the fish's safety comes first. You can put it back and it will fight again another day. We can take one last look. Maybe one last photo. Ah, she's ready. <laughs> Alright, so that was fish number two at just past ten past one. Uh, so pretty steady action I suppose, we've only had two bites but we've had two fish from it. Um, it was really nicely hooked and really simply unhooked. Uh, I mean I didn't even bother setting up a video for it, the hook just came out in the net basically with that second one so I suppose I was lucky to get it in. <laughs> um, but yeah, really great sport and I'm not going to mess about, I'm going to get another bait on and get back in the water and uh, we'll see if we can get one more pike, hopefully it'll be the big one uh, before we have to go with three. Well, it's three o'clock, so it's time to pack up. Thanks very much for watching, and thanks for sticking with us. It was great to get back into piking in 2019 after a few blank trips in 2018. So we caught two beautiful fish today. That's what makes a piking adventure worthwhile. And we also had time to examine some of the rods and reels that I'm using. Mike will be with me for the next piking adventure in a few weeks. Until then, check out some of the other episodes and also explore the Facebook page for some tips and tricks and some entertainment as well. See you on the next piking adventure.